What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here and moving on to the next section with hypothesis testing, we're now going to talk about two sample hypothesis testing. So up until this point, we've been doing hypothesis testing on one sample from one population. So we have a population, we have some kind of assumed truth about it, some kind of status quo, which is also the null hypothesis. And what we do is we take that population, take one sample from it, test the sample, and see whether that status quo has changed, whether that null hypothesis changed, whether there's more evidence pointing towards an alternative hypothesis. But now what we're going to be doing is working with two samples. And to show the difference between one sample and two samples, I'm going to bring back a popular example that I've been working with up until this point. Pretending that a company runs a promotion and to see the effects of that promotion. So you could test different things and pretend that we're testing whether the sales per customer visit have gone up after the promotion. So the customers of the company is the total population. So the company runs the promotion and then what they do is they take a sample of customers and they test that sample to see whether those sales have increased from the promotion to come up with some kind of conclusion. Where is there, is there evidence pointing that the promotion was effective or not effective? But notice this sample here, it's one sample for the entire company. But let's say that this company has multiple stores, for example. And just for simplicity, let's say that it has two different stores. So we got store one over here, and then we have store two. And let's say that these stores are in different parts of a city, or maybe even a country, or maybe even different parts of the world. And the company wants to test how effective the promotion was for each store separately and maybe see if there's any differences in the promotion for this store versus this one so they know when to run or how big of promotions to run for these two different areas. So instead of taking one sample for company-wide, for the customers company-wide, they take a sample of customers from this store and then they take a sample of customers from this store. Right, so instead of working with one population, taking one sample from one population, we split it up into two populations and now we're taking samples from both populations. And then again, testing whether there's potential differences in the effects of the promotion on this store versus this one. We could test for whether they're different, we could test whether the sales have um, whether there's more sales for this store versus this one after the promotion, that would be a one tail test or vice versa, right? If the sales for this store was greater than this one after the promotion, right? So again, we could be doing one tail test, two tail tests for two sample hypothesis testing as well. So that's just an example of how we'll be using two sample hypothesis testing. Again, very high level, we're gonna get more technical. But as usual, I want to start with a higher level before going further. Now, another thing you're gonna see me doing in the next few videos in this section is uh, taking our two samples and making a further distinction about them. And the distinction is whether the two samples are independent or dependent, right? It's actually going to affect the type of hypothesis testing we do. And the difference between independent samples and dependent samples, the independent samples, the observations in both are unrelated. So an example of this is the example I just went over with the two stores in different parts of a country, for example. The customers the sample of customers from each store, they're unrelated to each other, right? And so that would be an example of independent samples. Versus dependent samples, the observations in each sample are related somehow. 
So a couple of examples for this. Let's say, um, for example, you're testing whether a student's marks in a certain school or let's say a certain school board. The difference, uh, you're testing for difference, uh, differences in math and science marks. You want to see if there's some kind of difference between those two. So your two samples would be math marks versus science marks. And to make this test legit, you have to test the marks for math and science for the same student, right? So you would take, for example, student A, find out what their math marks are, and then you would take that same student, find out what their science marks are. And then you would take student B, right, get their math marks, and then you would take that same student's science marks. And then you could test, you could get a sample for each, right? So this first sample is math marks, second sample is science marks, and notice that both of these samples are related by the same student, right? So that's an example of two dependent samples. Uh, another example, let's say that you're testing for um, a couple spending on a certain product or in a certain store. So you would test how much the wife is spending versus how much the husband is spending, right, in a certain store, let's say. And so you would have to look at each couple separately. So if you took couple A, then you would test how much wife A spends versus how much uh, husband B or uh, husband A spends. Right, and then how much wife B spends, couple B, wife B versus husband B, et cetera, et cetera. So notice that these two samples, they are related because of marriage, right? This person's married to this person. And we're checking whether there's a difference between how much a husband spends versus how much a wife spends at a store. You could even, um, that promotion example that I went through, with the two separate stores, that's an example of independent samples, but you could also have dependent samples testing a promotion. And the way you could do that is you can test in a store, let's say pre-promotion spending versus post-promotion spending, right? And you would test the same customer. So you would find out on average, how much did customer A buy at the store before the promotion? And then how much did customer A, that same customer, spend at the store post promotion? So notice that these two samples, so you would have customer B, customer B over here, et cetera, et cetera. So these two samples are related by the same customer, right? So hopefully you get the differences between dependent samples and independent samples from those uh, examples. As you do more questions, you're going to start to know whether this is an independent set of samples or a dependent set of samples. You're going to get more questions with independent set of samples, just as a heads up. Because with dependent samples, there's only one kind of hypothesis testing that we're going to be doing. And actually, that's a good segue to give you kind of an overview, a visual overview of where we're going in the next few videos. So we got uh, two sample hypothesis testing. And the first distinction that needs to be made is whether the samples you're working with are dependent or independent. So let's start off with dependent because it's actually easier. If the samples are dependent, we're going to be doing something called a paired t-test. And I'm going to have a video talking about what a paired t-test is. That's going to be later on in the section. Now with independent samples, 
we're going to have to make further distinctions. The first distinction we're going to have to make is whether the population standard deviations are known or unknown, right? So before when we were doing one sample test, we only had one population standard deviation, but now we're going to have two populations. So we got to check whether the population standard deviation in the first population and the standard deviation in the second population is known or whether those two population standard deviations are unknown. And if they're known, just like confidence intervals, just like um, one sample hypothesis testing, if they're known, we're going to be using the Z distribution. And so we're going to be doing a Z test. Right, very similar to one sample hypothesis testing. It's just the way we calculate that test statistic is going to be different. And I'm going to have a video on that. Now, if you have independent samples and the population standard deviations are unknown for both samples, or both populations rather, then you got to make another distinction here. So this is where um, it's a little bit more unique with two sample hypothesis testing versus one sample. You can have unknown population standard deviations, but you can know whether they are equal or unequal. Right, a little bit counterintuitive, but it's possible for you not to know what the actual population standard deviations are for the two populations, but you can know whether the standard deviations are equal or unequal. And depending on this, there's going to be two types of tests. Here, we're going to be doing something called a pooled variance t-test. Right? We're going to kind of be pooling the variances together and we're going to be running a t-test. Uh, we're going to be using the t-distribution and again the way you calculate that uh, test statistic is going to be a little bit unique, something you haven't seen before yet. And then over here, if the population standard deviations are assumed unequal, you would be doing something called, um, there's actually different names for it, I'm just going to write non-pooled variance t-test. Okay, another word for, the, uh, word for this type of test, sometimes you'll see it called Welch's test, sometimes you'll see it called a separate variance test, so we're not pooling the variances together, right? We're going to be separating them, keeping them separate, so it's called a non-pooled variance t-test or a separate variance t-test. And sometimes you actually won't know whether the um, population standard deviations of the two populations you're looking at are equal or unequal. So there's actually a test to test for the differences in those uh, standard deviations. And basically that's called an F test for variances. So it's kind of like almost like a test at this part here. Now, a couple of points I want to make before finishing off this video about this diagram here is number one, all of these tests that I talked about, they could be split up into one tail test versus two tail tests, just like one sample hypothesis testing. So I could have made this diagram even more complex. I could have kept splitting these up, right? This could be one tailed versus two tailed. And then the two tailed could be left versus right. Right, one tailed versus two tailed, one tailed versus two tailed. Right, but I'm just going to keep the diagram like this for simplicity. But just be aware of that. You got to be on the lookout for whether you are doing a one tailed versus two tailed. That's why those fundamentals from one sample hypothesis testing are important. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing is that these tests that I talked about, except for the test on variances. These here are testing the means of the populations, of the two populations you'll be looking at, the differences in the means, right? But if you remember from one sample hypothesis testing, we also tested proportions, 
right? And we're going to be testing differences in proportions of two populations as well, right? Using two samples. And basically on this diagram where that's going to fit is over here, right? So for proportions, the samples have to be independent. The two samples you're looking at. And just like uh, uh, one sample hypothesis testing, when you're dealing with proportions, you're going to be doing a Z test. All right, so proportions kind of on the side here from uh, the independent uh, samples. It's always on two independent samples. And uh, you're always going to be doing a Z test, not a T test. Right, so these tests over here, they're always on the means. Right, thought I would make that distinction. And then this F test here is uh, related to the uh, variances of the two samples or the two populations rather that you are uh, looking at. And that's pretty much it for the summary. So that's what we're going to be going over in the uh, next few videos. I'm going to have videos on each of these over here, right? Different kinds of cases. We'll see how many examples we can get through. But uh, this is just a visual summary of what we're going to be doing. And also this pair T test we're going to be doing. That's going to be more so at the end. Right, so as I said, you're gonna be working more with independent samples. You could see from this diagram, there's a lot more going on on this side versus over here. And so in the next video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an example of this case over here. We're gonna be doing a Z test on two independent samples where the population standard deviations are known.